Kia Robert McLaughlin here again, and welcome to Lecture 2 of Week 8, continuing our study of solving uh, linear systems. The last two examples we've done, in fact the only two examples in these video lectures, were case, we did a 2x2 two two case and a 3x3 three three case, and in both of them the matrix had distinct eigenvalues, namely all the eigenvalues were different numbers and none of them were repeated. So today we'll look at the case when some of the eigenvalues are repeated. Now what does that mean? How to tell when an eigenvalue is repeated? When you find the determinant of a minus lambda i, that's called the characteristic polynomial of the matrix, and factor it, some of those factors may be repeated. And that's what we mean by a repeated or eigenvalue. Now the algebraic multiplicity of an eigenvalue is this number mi. So it's the power of the factor lambda minus lambda i. We'll see this in the examples. It's the number of times that factor, lambda minus lambda i, occurs in the factored form of the characteristic polynomial. It's the number of times that eigenvalue is repeated. So if I had a 4 by 4 matrix and the lambdas came out to be 1, 1, 1, and 7, then this eigenvalue would have algebraic multiplicity 1, and this eigenvalue would have algebraic algebraic multiplicity 3, and the determinant there would look like lambda minus 1 cubed times lambda minus 7. Now the geometric multiplicity of, of that eigenvalue is something else, and it may be a different number. What it is, is the dimension of the null space of a minus lambda i i. Remember how to find the eigenvectors. You write down a minus lambda i, and you try and find the null space of that matrix. And in the examples we've done so far, that was one dimensional. There was just one eigenvector. The number of linearly independent eigenvectors that go with that eigenvalue at the dimension of the null space, and that is called the geometric multiplicity. So in this case, when you have repeated eigenvalues, it's very important to know what is the geometric multiplicity of those repeated eigenvalues. Once you know that, you'll know the answer to a very important question, which is, does the geometric multiplicity equal the algebraic multiplicity? Does the geometric multiplicity, they're too long to write out, equal the algebraic multiplicity? In other words, in this case here, where I had a, a, an eigenvalue with algebraic multiplicity 3, I'd be asking, is the dimension of the null space of a minus lambda i, does it equal 3? Or are there three linearly independent eigenvectors? So there will be several cases. Well, the first case is when the geometric multiplicity does equal the algebraic multiplicity, and the other case is where it does not, where it's smaller, where you essentially don't have enough eigenvectors. So today we'll do an example where you do have enough eigenvectors. So this is case one, where the geometric multiplicity does equal the algebraic multiplicity, which you won't know ahead of time. You won't know until you actually write down a minus lambda i and start trying to find the eigenvectors and count up and see how many there are. Okay, so let's do this example. I have to write down a minus lambda i and take its determinant. 1 minus lambda, 0, 0. 3 minus lambda, 2. 3 minus 1, 3 minus lambda. I see there's lots of zeros in the first row there, so I'll expand along the first row. 1 minus lambda, determinant of, cross out the first row and the first column, work out the determinant of that, it's going to be minus lambda times 3 minus lambda minus minus 1 times 2, which is negative 2. Now, I don't want to multiply out the whole thing because I can see from the first factor there that lambda equals 1 is an eigenvalue. But I do have to expand out 
the second bracket there, which will give me lambda squared minus 3 lambda plus 2. And now I have to factor that quadratic, which will be lambda minus 1, lambda minus 2. And that is equal to 0 when lambda is equal to 1 from the first factor, 1 from the second factor, and 2 from the third factor. So this matrix was chosen to illustrate what happens when you have a repeated eigenvalue. In this case, the eigenvalue 1 is repeated and it's got algebraic multiplicity 2. So I've actually chosen a different example here than the one that is in the uh, printed study guide that goes with this lecture. So you can regard that one as just a, another example of the same phenomenon. That one, the numbers come out slightly more complicated, so I thought I'd just pick an easier one for the video. Now I don't, for the purposes of illustration, I'm not going to bother with calculating the eigenvector that goes with this one. I want to illustrate what happens with the repeated eigenvalue. So that means I have to write down a minus 1 times i, which is 0, 0, 0, 3, negative 1, 2, 3, negative 1, 2, and uh, find the null space of that matrix. So here we go. Now, the first row is all zeros, so that means there's no pivot element in the first row. So that means I'll have to swap some rows in order to introduce a pivot element. So I'll swap row 1 and row 3, it doesn't actually matter. 3, negative 1, 2. 3, negative 1, 2. 0, 0, 0. Now I'll replace, oh, this will, Now this is now non-zero, so that can be my pivot element. I'll replace row 2 by row 2 minus row 1. We get 3, negative 1, 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So I've got two zero rows, and that tells me that this matrix will have a two-dimensional null space. There will be two linearly independent eigenvectors that go with this eigenvalue. This is my pivot element. This means that there will be a free parameter, because I remember I'm solving a minus i times k equals 0, I'm trying to find the general solution for k. That means there will be a free parameter for each non-pivot column, which is columns 2 and 3 in this case. So k2 can be a free parameter. And k3 can be another free parameter, which can take any other value. So there's only one non-trivial equation, which is uh, going to tell me that k or 3k1 minus k2 plus 2k3 equals 0. So k1 is equal to one third of k2 minus 2k3 which is one-third of k2 is s minus 2t. Which means that the most general eigenvector is one-third s minus 2t. k2 is s, k3 is t. Where are the eigenvectors? Well, if you, if you let s and t range over all real numbers, these points here will uh, describe a plane. So all eigenvectors are all vectors that lie in this plane with parameters s and t. But I can write this as s times 1 third 1 0 plus t times minus 2 thirds 0 1. So I can take these two vectors as two linearly independent eigenvectors of the eigenvalue negative 1. You can choose any convenient values of s and t. Uh, I can choose s equals 3 and I get uh, 3. So I get uh, s equals 3, 1, 3, 0 choose t equals 3, I get negative 2, 0, 3. 
So I get the general solution is going to be x is equal to some constant times e to the minus t times the first eigenvalue, eigenvector, plus some other arbitrary constant times e to the minus t times the second eigenvector, plus the third arbitrary constant times e to the 2t, I think the eigenvalue was 2, yes that's correct, times k3, the eigenvector that goes with lambda equals 2, which I didn't work out yet. So, if you have a repeated eigenvalue, if it has enough um, linearly independent eigenvectors, if the geometric multiplicity is equal to the algebraic multiplicity for all eigenvalues, then you will still find the general solution of, in this way. All solutions will be uh, basically exponentials of this type. So you can guess what's coming up next. What happens when you have a repeated eigenvalue where the geometric multiplicity is less than the algebraic multiplicity? Then you'll need to look for something else, and that's what we will do in the next lecture.